If you're still struggling with server components, you're not alone. Dan Abramoff recently did a quiz about server components on Twitter and nearly half of the respondents got each question wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna go through each of the questions, show what the answer is, and most importantly, why things behave the way that they do. So Dan's first question is the one on screen here. We have this function note, which is a server component, and it renders a toggle, which is a client component, and then details, which is again a server component. The toggle has a state called is on, which starts out at false, and it conditionally renders its children based on this is on state. So what happens when we set is on to true? So let's take a look at the code for this question. We have a page which gets a note, and in this case, it's just a simple function that returns a string, and then we render the note. Inside of the note component, we have the toggle, and then as a child, we have the details. If we take a look at the toggle, it has this is on and set is on state. We can toggle it, and we get a console log when it renders. Then we have a button to toggle. We have a diff that shows whether is on is true or false. And we either render the children or we render this paragraph tag that says not showing children. And the reason I did this is because rendering null can be a bit ambiguous in terms of what's actually going on. And finally, if we take a look at the details component, you'll see we log before and after this get details function. And the get details function just waits for two seconds, increments a number, and then returns some text as well as the number. So so here I am on the page for the first question, and you can see that if I click the toggle, we get the details immediately. Let's take another look at why that is. When I refresh the page, pay special attention to the terminal here in the bottom right. So you can see the server started getting the details for this details.tsx component as soon as we made the initial request. However, getting the details takes two seconds and we saw the page much faster than two seconds. So what's going on here? Well, let's refresh the page again and this time I'll try clicking the toggle as soon as it appears. And you can see I was able to click the toggle immediately, but the details didn't show until all the fetching server side was done. So how can we have the page even though the server still needs to do more work? So the reason this is happening is that all server components for a given page are rendered in one pass on the server. Now, this is quite a subtle thing and I can see why people are struggling with it. We're not rendering details immediately on the page, so why is it being rendered on the server? Well, this is just an architectural decision with React server components. For example, in SolidJS with server components, children that are not visible in the initial page aren't actually rendered. But in React server components, this function note and this function details are server components. And while the direct child of note is toggle, details is passed through toggle. And so what's going on here is that in terms of how the components are composed, it kind of makes sense to look at details not as a child of toggle, but as a child of note. So note is a child of page, and then toggle is a child of note. But for details, we're kind of going through toggle. And this is why the entire server tree can render at once. But this still doesn't answer one more question, which is that if we're waiting to render all the server components, why can we see this stuff already? And the answer to this is that the server components are basically being streamed in. And so if we look at the page that we get from the server, you can see we initially get the static representation of what the page looks like in the beginning. And then down here, we stream in a bunch of script tags. If we look at the very last one, you can see here that we have this text. There's still a lot going on behind the scenes here in terms of how the data comes in, how the diffing works, how the new DOM is created. If you wanna learn more about that, I'd recommend watching Dan's recent appearance on Kenzie Dodds' stream, or also any of the React server component streams that Ryan Carniato has done recently, in particular, the one with Nikhil. I'll put a link to that one in the description. Before we move on, I'd like to show a few more things. The first one is that in this example, we have the details as the children prop for toggle. But what happens if we do this? So details isn't passed as the explicit children prop, but instead it's passed as an arbitrary prop. So now I'm on this Q1B page and you can see that if we refresh the page here, the exact same thing happens as before. So whether a client component takes another server component as a children prop or just as a prop like this, it doesn't make a difference in terms of how the rendering happens. So the last question is, what if instead of passing the details as a prop, we just import it inside of the client component and then render it here? And the short answer is you really don't want to do this. So let's refresh the page here and then click the toggle. And you can see we're entering into an infinite loop of getting the details and re-rendering. And this is one of those subtle foot guns of React server components that I think a lot of people are gonna run into initially, but similar to something like use effect, we're just gonna start linting for it and sooner or later, it'll just kind of be common sense. 
So to recap, the answer to Dan's first question is the details appear instantly, and it's because all server components are rendered in one pass on the server and then streamed into the client. And this is true whether you use the children prop or pass components as a different type of prop, but what you should avoid is to import server components from within client components. The one exception to the not importing server components in client components rule is basically stateless components. So if you have a pure function that just takes some props and returns some HTML, you can import that in any kind of component and use it there and it'll be okay. This is especially important, of course, for design systems and stuff like that. So here we have the second question. We're in the same component tree as before, but now the details component allows us to edit the route and then refresh the router. So once we get the new server component tree, what happens? The first question is, does the state of the toggle component get reset? And the second question is, does details show the fresh content that arrived from the server? And you can see our component tree is similar to before, but I've added this button component. And in the button component, we're getting the router. Then we have a transition. And then we have this button, which starts a transition to refresh the router. And while the transition is pending, we show refreshing. And otherwise, it's a button that says refresh. And so if I refresh the page here, you'll see it's kind of the same setup as before where I can click toggle to show the children. And now I can click refresh. You'll see we're refreshing and then this increments. So to answer Dan's questions, number one, no, the toggle state does not get reset because otherwise we wouldn't see the content anymore. And number two, yes, it does show fresh content. The important thing to think about here is that if it didn't work this way, it'd be really bad. The main goal of server components is to give you most of the advantages of a client rendered single page app alongside most of the advantages of a multi-page app. But if getting a new server component tree would mean that all the client state gets reset, then it wouldn't really be an upgrade over a traditional multi page app. And likewise, if refreshing the server component tree wouldn't show fresh content, then the whole model wouldn't really be useful. Client state does not get reset on a refetch of the server component tree. And in this sense, it just kind of keeps working like normal React. If the same component renders in the same spot, then its state is preserved during the update. There's no reason to destroy that component. Another thing we can look at here is how this looks in the dev tools. And I'm gonna switch to Firefox for this because for some reason I can't get this working in Chrome. Leave me a comment if you know how to get the server component responses to show correctly in Chrome dev tools. So we're in the Firefox dev tools now and I'll click on refresh. And you can see we get this response. If we look inside of the response, we get this sort of JSON-like structure. Now, the component we care about is this details for foobar here. So let's search for foobar in the response. And you'll see it's this last one, which has the number six. And the way the structure works is that there's basically slots. So what we can do is search for dollar sign $L6. And we can find that here. And after the L6, we can see this L7. So let's take a look at what that is, for example. And you can see the one with the ID of seven is just a reference to the button.tsx file because this is a client component. So unlike the server components, which are getting their new data, for the client component, the response just says, hey, it's this component right there. Because on the client, we already have this component. So another useful thing you can do is put this sort of JSON-like response into a JSON formatter. And it's not quite real JSON, but most formatters are gonna be smart enough to show it anyway. And if you look at it like this, it kind of becomes easier to read. So for example, here we have some framework internal stuff. Then here we have toggle and the button component, which are client components. And then below this, we have server components. And you can see, for example, in this one, we have here some tailwind class names. We have children, which again are using this dollar sign L syntax for the slots. And if you take the time to look through this for a fairly simple page like this, you can really start seeing what the server is giving us back on a router refresh and hopefully understand how this is used to rebuild the server component tree. Now let's take a look at Dan's third question. So we have a layout component, which is a client component and takes two children left and right, which are each server components. And inside of the layout component, we have some state that can change the width of the two different columns. I've built a very simple representation of this. So we have a container that takes a left and a right child. In the container, we have a bit of state, and then we have a slider input, which changes that state. And then we have the two children and their width is being controlled by the state. And then the two children are quite similar to before. So we await some data, which takes a couple seconds to load. And then we return that data and we just render a div that has the data in it. And sidebar is the same. If I go to Q3, first it takes a while to load because we need to 
await the data. And now when I resize the columns, we don't need to fetch any new data. And if you think back, this is basically the same as the first question. And the thing to take away here is that the React server component tree doesn't refetch unless you tell the router to do so. From the container client's point of view, this left component and this right component are being passed to it not as components, but as the render output of those components. So it just keeps on displaying that render output. So then this time, why didn't the layout render immediately and then have the sidebar and the content stream in? The answer is basically that client components don't only render on the client. I think client components is a really bad misnomer. They're actually isomorphic components, so they run both on the server and on the client. The thing to understand here is that it's basically the opposite of the old model. So in a regular Next or React app, if you're doing server-side rendering and hydration, then that code will run on the server and the client, and everything else only runs on the client. With React server components or the Next.js app directory, by default, everything runs on the server. So all your server components run on the server, all your client components run on the server, and then your client components rerun on the client. And through serialization and this JSON-like structure that we looked at before, it then knows how to rebuild your component tree and what goes in where. Let's do one more thing to look at this. So now I've placed a console log inside of the container component. And you can see now that if I refresh the page, container ran on the server and it also ran on the client. So what does all of this mean and why does it make server components so compelling? The reason I'm personally so excited about it is that we get a much smaller bundle size, but we don't get some of the downsides that a typical multi-page app has. So in this example, I'm on my personal site, which is built in Astro, and this theme switcher is a solid JS component. Now this site is fairly optimized, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it very well, but look at the theme switcher when I navigate to a different page. I hope this is gonna be visible at 30 FPS on YouTube, but occasionally when we navigate to a new page, the theme switcher takes a fraction of a second to load in. Because of what we just saw with persistence of client components, this isn't gonna be a thing anymore with server components. Now, of course, this particular example is maybe not that big of a deal, but if you think about what this means on a bigger scale, we can have these really nice, really performant multi-page app-like experiences, but we don't need to get a whole new page every time we do something. It's a really nice shift, and I'm looking forward to work more with server components and for them to become the standard that most people use by default. How much client-side code you need to run is gonna depend on your app, and some of them will need a lot of it, but I think even for those apps, React server components, and specifically Next with the app directory and its layouts and all of that, that is gonna be a really compelling choice. So I hope this video will help you understand a few things. If it did, consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I recently made a video about Next.js with the pages directory and why that's basically a single page app, even if you're using server-side rendering. There's gonna be a link to that in the corner of the video, so consider clicking on that and giving it a watch. And if you found this interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps a lot. And that's all I had, thanks for watching.